Hi guys, welcome to this new episode of CreateBox. Today we're going to create our first object of this production pack that I named Pirate Island. It's a pirate pistol that I'm going to use in the movie that I'm creating with this material. As well, you can use it to begin with your own collection of items in your own video games. I'm going to create 5 arms and each one will be more powerful than the last one. So let's begin with this pistol. The first thing that we're going to do is uh, it's to select a palette that uh, it is going to be the representation of wood, metal and gold. I start with uh, the lining all uh, and the shapes. The more important part, the principle of every illustration in my workflow begins with the foundation, which it is quite the shapes, the basic shapes of every single element that it is in your illustration or your drawing. So begin with this and we start building the pieces of metal in this case and enjoy the process it's pretty relaxing to just kind of copy quite uh, your drawing into an illustration Try to illustrate this part uh, entirely separated because it is going to be a golden ring. From here try to draw all of your elements. And with this technique you can create all sorts of guns, obviously. You are just learning the techniques, which is the important part. It is not a matter of copy in some way of uh, this artwork. It is the idea that you understand what is the process and then you can create your own arms, your muskets, your your rifles or swords or every single object that you may require for your animations or for your beauty games. This is a good thing that you have to learn to do. This step is to uh, use the pathfinder to create a hole into another object. Just select an object, put it in front of the object that you want to uh, combine and then use the Pathfinder tool to create this hole that it is obviously part of the trigger. At this point you can use the colors that um, you have assigned and, and now uh, it is a good uh, way to keep your palette in a group. So go ahead and select all the colors and create a group and that group will be uh, your, your main palette. In that way you're not going to lose uh, uh, the color that you have in your illustration. Try to all the time maintain quite the same amount of color and, and, and then add another color or other colors but the most important part is that you have a palette in which you have control of a color scheme in your whole illustration
I'm just using this kind of a bluish color for the metal part but later in the illustration I'm going to change the color for something more metal. Now this is a good way to create um, screws. Just create a little bowl, then a rectangle with a gradient in order to create the effect that this indentation that the screws do have. Try to create quite of the illusion of something lighter um, in order to create uh, something that it is washed out in some way the the screw is a little washed out this is the line that i'm talking about you can see that this is quite not that perfect screw it is something that have been handled obviously it is a gun Add some shadowing behind the screws in order to create the fact that it is going deep, it is going uh, inside the wooden parts. Now create some shadings for the handle of this gun, as well create these little bumps of light. Uh, which it is quite a representation not only of the three dimension but as well kind of this uh, wash out um, of the wood it is not a shiny brand new gun it is a gun that have been used at this point you can start to create uh, the volume with some shadowing this is a metal part, this is a gold part, but it is a metal part, so it will have quite a little depth there, and now you can start creating the highlights in the borders and all across the illustration. Try to, this is the moment to enjoy your lighting, try to focus on a point of light. In this case, the, the light comes from the top left corner. That's the point of reference that I'm using in this illustration. So try to follow this sort of light in order to uh, be more realistic with your illustrations. Try to add little details, as you can see this is the pistol grip, so it is a wooden piece, at some particular point it is going to be damaged and will have these indentations, this, uh, all these irregularities. This is a metal part that it is on the wood, it is encrusted in the wood. Uh, so we have quite of a surrounding uh, a, sh a little shadow surrounding the piece of wood now rearrange a little bit the gradients remember that the set of light comes from the top left so the your gradients really need to be pointed the, the lighter part of your gradients must be pointing to that point uh, in some way that the light or the sun is illuminating this piece from the top corner. Go ahead, keep doing uh, your gradients. Uh, a, a good way to create gradients, it is to create the gradient with one color and then the other color, I'm talking about two color gradients. So one color is a hundred percent 
the word is a solid color and the other one is totally zero it's totally transparent in this way the light will blend with your original color look for some golden color because the highest light it is golden Now we're going to create our own brush. Try to create your own brushes uh, when you want to create some illustrations. In this way, I'm creating this brush to create these little waves and all this decoration that pirate pistols usually have. They love this kind of uh, patterns in their guns. I don't know why. Maybe it looks nice uh, back then but uh, it's cool uh, let's say that it's cool here is a good way to use the simplify patch this tool allows you as you can see to redefine your patches your lines in order to have more consistent corps not something this irregular you can use the simplify patch in, uh, to get that particular effect I'm using this effect right here as well once again try to use it when you have uh, this curve and you don't like quite uh, the final result you want something more refined with less points with less anchor points Illustrator will do that job for you now be creative here i'm not going to go with too many details here you can go crazy totally crazy in this part of your illustrations uh, but i'm not going to be that fancy with this um, kind of a decoration nonetheless i'm going to, to make it look good nonetheless you can create all patterns where uh, you can add roses, skulls, people, well you can be as creative as you can. Now this is a good point to start to create in the metal textures. Remember metal will have uh, the edges pretty highlights, almost white. Uh, yeah. So create uh, the same technique to create your highlights a gradient with in this case both extremes transparent now uh, keep doing the illumination reduce the opacity of your elements uh, to be more more realistic to the point that you feel that you're doing it uh, right Keep adding some highlights in the golden parts. This is just a matter of detailing, detailing, detailing. More details, more details. The metal is not that perfect, so we're going to add some indentations as well. Since every piece of wood, every piece of metal is over the wood try to make something to blend both pieces together uh, like shadows or indentations uh, in the wood as i told you the metal is not perfect this metal is not uh, that shiny that shiny uh, let's say shiny uh, metal perfection Copy your patterns into the metal pieces.
as I told you, uh, I'm going to create quite of a shadow or, or with highlights with a border that create the illusion that these metal pieces are over the wooden piece. Now we we'll find the gradients. Take out the bluish color, as you can see. Change the bluish color to something more gray, something more silver. Change the, the direction of uh, the gradients in order to create more roundness. Play with uh, uh, the blending modes to get a better results while you're combining elements. In this case, I'm just going to go with opacity um, to reduce quite the presence of this this um, this decoration on the metal on the metal pieces. Keep doing your metal pieces and apply your gradient, your metal gradient, and then go ahead and put the decoration that you've created in this little piece right here. Add some details to the metal part in order to create a more complex or visually more complex structure since it is your own invention because this is my gun in some way I just drew the gun with some references all of the time use references it's quite of a key element of your illustrations you're not going to well maybe you are going to be as good as other artists and you can create your own words in, in, in your mind. But the best way to go is while you're using references because there are some details that you can miss without any reference. So it is the best way to go. Try to have your references not only for your vector works, for your artworks, for your background, for your characters, uh, literally for everything. Try to have good references and your work will be okay. In this case, I'm just creating quite of a volume for this piece of gold that it is part of the pistol. Try to redefine uh, your shapes in order to have a better look and feel. For now, I'm pretty satisfied with this result so far. So it is just a matter of adding some details here, lights here and there. Try to add lights on all of the borders where the light is bouncing. As you can see here in the corner, the corner sort of pretty good, good, good place to place your lights. These are not new metal pieces, so try to create quite these little imitations in the metal. As well in the wood, go ahead and once again try to add some kind of illumination to give you the idea that this is not a brand new piece of wood in some way. Add some lights here and there, where you believe that the the, the light is bouncing, the details of the wood really need to be there because the wood as well is not, it's not a perfect surface. And keep doing, keep going, adding your the lighting. This is a, a pretty interesting and I have a lot of fun while I'm adding the lighting because that gives a pretty good sense of three dimension and you can bring reality when you focus your lights coming from a from a from a source of light 
so you have a pretty good time while you're doing this try to add little details to the wood Clean up uh, your seats, your vectors that are out of the border in some way. Add more shadows. More lights. At the bottom of your illustration, there are going to be shadows because this is a cylinder. Uh, you can add uh, more shadows and change. Uh, I'm going to change more this gradient because I'm not having quite the roundness of a cylinder that he wanted ah there you go that is that's what he wanted now we're going to add a skull so uh, this is quite the skull that I've designed for this collection, so it's pretty, you're going to see uh, this, this skull several times in this particular package, in this pack of illustrations for this collection that is called Pirate Island. So this is quite the skull that I've decided or I'm deciding for this collection. So uh, you're going to see it. Uh, in several illustrations through this collection obviously keep doing quite the same concept add light add shadows and you're gonna be totally okay Add this shadow here at the bridge of the nose. Well, on the bridge of the non existing nose of this skull. This is a good technique to create a more interesting look and feel with your skulls. Try to add some a shadow that go through the middle. This technique, I, I use this technique as well to illuminate faces and heads. In this case, I'm using it with this little skull. There you go. I changed a little bit the position. I wanted to... Uh, I decided to go with this position or, or put the skull at this position. I like it. I love it, actually. So now we're going to add a little uh, a shadow behind the skull to demonstrate that it is something that it is in, that it is there and it has some volume. Now we're going to add extra shadowing with the uh, multiply. Just copy the element, 
just combine the element and then use this this is the last layer to add a little depth of as we can see I'm going to just bump all of the fissures with something more darker now create a sparks kind of a shining sparks this is pretty easy pretty 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 basic put the sparks here and there here and there change it to multiply in order to the white over the yellow will give you this um, kind of a better looking feel of something gold now the gun as well it's not perfect still it's not brand new steel as i said it's uh we're talking about uh that it is a gun and and the imperfections over the surface must be there you really if you want to go for a better uh, look and feel for a more realistic look and feel you have to create these indentations in the steel because it is not a perfect steel it's not a perfect metal it is an irregular surface and you can uh, use it all over the surfaces not only the metal you can use it as well uh, over the gold over the the, the the wood and then you can have quite a final detail for this gun So, uh, I believe that I'm almost done here. Just create a little shadow there. And that's it, I believe. I will try to close, um, try to um, fill these spaces uh, to create the illusion that it is part not a shadow it is a part of the piece it is something with volume so try to walk a little bit with these little guys and there you go this is the pirate pistol or first pistol of this set of illustrations so you can use the same technique to create all the guns that you may want to create for on your video games so i hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and remember have a good time while you're creating your own worlds